Welcome and good morning. This week our radio broadcast and altar flowers are to the glory of God and in loving memory of Donald and Audrey Anderson by their daughter Karen and granddaughters Sarah and Hannah. This week our center base is to the glory of God and in honor of our 65th wedding anniversary on October 6th by Don Hopkins. Congratulations, Don and Norma. This week we share joy with Claire Atwood, who turns 86 on Thursday, October 6th. Birthday blessings and have a wonderful year, Claire. We also want to extend our deepest sympathies to two Bethany families this week. Nina Johnson passed away on Monday, September 26th at Northwood Place. Her funeral will be held in Escanaba about mid-October. Jill Baum passed away on Wednesday, September 28th at Christian Park Village. Her visitation will be held from 11 a.m. to noon on Tuesday, October 4th at Anderson's Funeral Home. The funeral to celebrate her life will follow also at Anderson's at noon. Okay, so we still need about two more people for the handbell choir for Christmas Eve to play a couple songs. You don't need a musical background. Carol Beck is going to be leading us and practice will begin in November. We wanna celebrate the success that we had last week at Bay College. Thank you for the wonderful response we received for the dinner. The kids were so thrilled to have us back at the college and was able to actually interact with the servers. Our free store will be open this Tuesday on October 4th. It's gonna be open from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. I've listed in the bulletin in the announcements the uh, by order of importance of the donations that they still need. And I'm still looking for one volunteer from 11 a.m. to one if that's possible. Will the people please stand as we uh, call ourselves to confession? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us we have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved in God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gathering Hymn. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord of victory for our God. Alleluia. Prayer of the day. Let us pray. Benevolent, merciful God, when we are empty, fill us. When we are weak in faith, strengthen us. When we are cold in love, warm us, that with fervor we may love our neighbors and serve them for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Be seated for the reading. A reading from Habakkuk, the oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw. O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen, or cry to you, violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. So the law becomes slack, and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous, Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and does not lie. If it seems to tarry, Wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them, but the righteous live by their faith. 
the word of the Lord. Psalm 37. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, who shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Put your trust in the Lord and see what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light, and the justice of your case like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Turn from anger, leave rage alone. Do not be provoked, it leads only to evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. A reading from Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Enos, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord. And at this time, I'd like to dismiss the kids to Sunday school. Gospel according to St. Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you? would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come, come here at once, take your place at the table, would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron, serve me while I eat and drink, later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also 
When you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we're worthless slaves. We've done only what we ought to have done. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of each heart, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, faith, faith is touching a mystery. Faith is to perceive another dimension to absolutely everything else in the world. In faith, the mysterious meaning of life comes through. Faith sees and knows and senses the very presence of God in this world. Faith means being grasped by a power greater than we are, a power it shakes us and turns us and transforms us and heals us. But most of all, you see, it is being grasped by something bigger than we are. Well, what comes next after being grasped? Sometimes I guess you just have to live the answers. Sometimes we just have to test the solutions. How many times haven't we seen where a couple is struggling with their anger and with one another and then they kind of come up with a solution, something they feel that will work. It looks good, sounds good, but it helps sometimes put on the calendar about two or three months down the road. Now let's see if it's really as good as we thought it was. Solutions need to be tested. The great poet Rainer Maria Rilke wrote this in letters to a young poet. I would like to beg you, dear sir, as well as I can, to have patience with everything unresolved in your heart, to try to love the questions themselves, as if they were locked rooms or books written in a foreign language. Don't search for the answers which could not be given to you now because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then, someday, far in the future, you will gradually, without even noticing it, live your way into the answer. Rainer Maria Rilke. Sometimes I trust the poets more than I trust the theologians to say just the right thing in the right way at the right time. Jesus said, you need only a little kernel of faith, but that faith, it can move mountains. In other words, what you have already, use it. Put some feet underneath it. Act upon it. In this little text, our Lord, the master teacher, of course, he talks and teaches in the language of exaggeration because see that's what gets our attention 
Wake up, everybody. Gets our attention, right? It's the language of exaggeration that good teachers use to make things vivid and take root in our mind. He invites us to bring God back into the world, to have faith in God, to reveal what is concealed. And it is to have a radical trust and very little certitude. Over the years, I have come now to believe that there is very little certainty. But there's a lot of opportunity. Faith. Sometimes we have an opportunity to listen, especially to that, let's call it that still, small voice within. And it doesn't lie to us. I was strolling around Greenwich Village some years ago in Manhattan. Came across this neat T-shirt. And on it, it said these words, lose your mind, come to your senses. <laughs> I thought, that's right. Sometimes we trust this computer on top of our head that can really screw us up more than we trust our guts that don't lie to us. Lose your mind. Come to your senses. Trust that still small voice from within. Now let me tell you a story. I don't know where I heard it, but I've used it many times. It's, I guess it's one of my wife's favorite stories. It's about a little boy, his name is Polly. And when he was quite young, his mom and dad had the, one of the first telephones in the neighborhood way back when. He remembers well the polished oak case. Remember that? It was fastened to the wall of the lower stair landing. The shiny receiver hung on the side of the box. The number then had only three digits, like 105. He was too little to reach the phone, but he used to listen with fascination when his mom or dad talked into it. And once she lifted him to speak to his dad, who was far away on business, and he couldn't believe it. There was his dad's voice coming out of that little box. Eventually, he discovered that somebody somewhere inside of that box lived. He thought, I guess her name is Information, please. They always asked for information. And it seemed like there was nothing that information didn't know. His mother would ask for a phone number that she had forgotten. Information would tell her. If the electric went out in rural America, information always seemed to know exactly the right time. Well, his first experience with this genie in the receiver came one day when his mom was visiting a neighbor. He was in the house all alone, playing down in the basement where the tool bench and workbench was that his dad used so often. He was playing around and then he hit his thumb with a hammer and whacked it really good. And he let out a cry. The pain was terrible. No use crying. Nobody was there to offer sympathy. So, well, he rem remembered, th there's that telephone. So he quickly ran. He put a footstool that was in the parlor up next to it. He dragged it over to the line landing and he hooked up. And he said, 
Information, please. And there was a click. And then a still, small voice he answered him, Hello, this is information. Is your mother home? No, she's just me. Well, why are you crying? I hit my thumb with a hammer downstairs, and it hurts. Information said, could you open, remember this one, the icebox? <laughs> you had go to the icebox, chip a little piece of ice, and then rub it on the finger that hurts, and the hurt will go away. He couldn't believe it. It worked. After that, Polly often called information, please. <laughs> he asked her for help with geography, and she would tell him where Philadelphia was and where the Orinoco was, that romantic river that when he got to be big, he would one day explore. And when he caught an injured chipmunk in the park, she told him how it would eat fruit and nuts, and maybe he could coax it back to life. He wasn't sure how to spell the word fix. Information, how do you, and she said, F-I-X. Thank you. Now there was a time that Petey, now Petey was a pet canary, and Petey died. And little Polly called information, please, and told her the sad story. And she listened, and then she said, after he asked her, why was it that these wonderful birds with the beautiful voice fall at the bottom of the birdcage, lying on their back with the feet up, and they're dead. Why? And she said, well, Polly, just remember this. There are other worlds to sing in. That's what she said that still small voice of someone who had, he had never seen before, but only heard in his ear and in his heart. Once when Polly was talking to information, his sister snuck up behind him, scared him to death. He fell, and as he fell, he grabbed the cord of the phone and it it fell out on the floor. And before you know it, there was a repairman at the door. And he said, I was working down the street, and some operator let me know that there was some trouble with this number. Polly told him what had happened, and the phone was fixed in minutes. Information, please, was something else. All of this took place in a small town in the United States of America many, many years ago. Now the family eventually moved away. When Polly was about nine years old, oh, and how he missed his mentor, the one that lived inside of that box in his home hanging there on the wall. As he grew into his teens, he often thought of her kindness, of the serenity that came over him every time that he talked to information, please. Those childhood conversations never left him. A few years later, 
on his way to college, his phone, uh, his uh, plane put down in Seattle, Washington. He had about a half an hour between plane connections, so he spent 15 minutes on the phone with his sister, who was now a mother and, and not the angry beast who he thought lived many years ago, that mean sister of his. And after 15 minutes, he hung up, and then he thought, oh, why didn't I give it a shot? Why didn't I call information, please? And he dials up. And sure enough, in a second, he hears that familiar, beautiful voice. Hello, this is information. Paulie says, I don't believe it. Is it really you after all these years? Well, without giving it much thought, he blurted out, can you tell me still how to spell fix? A long pause. Then came that soft answer. And the voice said, I guess that finger, Polly, must have healed by now, right? And he laughed. It's really you. I wonder if you have any idea how much you meant to me years ago. And she said, I wonder if you know how much you meant to me. I never had any children. I used to look forward to your calls. Silly, wasn't it? It didn't seem silly. And he told her all how often he thought about her over the years. And he asked if he could call her again when he came back to visit his sister when the first semester was over. Well, please do, she said. Uh, by the way, just ask, ask for Sally. Well, goodbye, Sally. Sounded strange for information please to actually have a name. And now, if I run into any chipmunks, I'll tell them to eat fruit and nuts. And three months later, Polly was back again at that Seattle airport. A different voice answered information. And he asked for Sally. Are you a friend? Another voice answered. He said, yes, I'm an old friend. You wouldn't happen to be Polly Valene, are you? Yes, I'm Polly. Well, Sally, she left a message for you. She wrote it down. She only died a few weeks ago working only part-time after a pretty long and lingering illness. Uh, this is what she wrote down. You tell Polly, there are other worlds to sing in, Polly. She said, he'll know what I mean. There you go, that still, small voice that never lied. It was like, once again, somehow, miraculously, hearing the voice of Jesus. Disciples were bugging him, you know. Jesus, t tell us how to get more faith. Look, all you, you already have it. All you need is a tiny seed, about the size of a mustard seed, and you could move a mountain. You got everything that you need in order to move ahead. Now let it grasp you, change you, challenge you, and transform you. Over the years, I suspect we've all heard that still small voice. I was a teenager, 
my mom and dad always went to a, a lake cottage in Wabino, Wisconsin, Trump Lake. Every summer during the polio season scare in Milwaukee, I was frolicking free as a bird on that lake. My auntie Ethel had sent me a little book on my birthday. It was by a New York preacher. His name was Norman Vincent Peale. It was called Faith is the Answer. Now, I had been confirmed. On the day of my confirmation, I took all three of those books, dumped them right in the garbage can. It was not a good experience. I thought finally I was done with this whole thing called church. But then came this book in the meal. I couldn't put the doggone thing down by this pastor from Marble Collegiate Church in Manhattan. For faith is the answer, he said, and sure enough, I couldn't put it down. I was sitting in the hammock, didn't stop reading until I had gone to the very last page. And to this day, I still have that book. And to this day, I know in my heart of hearts that he was absolutely dead right. Faith, this tiny seed, is the answer. It's amazing what happens when you hear that still, small voice, follow it. You know, a gentleman had kind of had a dream, and he said, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm really sick and tired of my wife. Yeah, I, I think I've got the most rotten kids in the world. You ever feel that way? Especially when they become teens? Oh, I, I'm sorry. And he thought, yeah, if I could just get away from here, go into the forest, you know, and leave it all behind, maybe I could find the perfect wife and the perfect kids. So he goes deep into the forest and he falls asleep. But before he does, he takes his shoes and he turns them in the direction that he wants to go the next day in the forest. Falls asleep. But an angel, as he is sleeping, takes his shoes and turns them around in the opposite direction. He wakes up, he puts the shoes on, goes in the direction that they're pointing, which is back home. And when he gets there, he can't believe how beautiful this woman is called his wife. And his kids, they're terrific. They're not rotten anymore. They're wonderful children. Now, did the wife change? Did the kids change? Or did he change? And that change, that seed that was sown in the middle of his dream made all the difference. Oh, do you hear it? You tell Polly. You tell him from this still small voice. You tell him. There are other worlds to sing in. Faith is the answer. Amen. We sing the hymn.
Will the people stand as we confess our faith? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom shall have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for you, Holy Church, in every place and for those who serve following the example of Christ. Help them to live by faith and walk by the light of your gospel, God of grace. Hear our prayer. For parts of the world ravaged by natural disaster, relieve those affected by floods, wildfires, droughts, earthquakes, tornadoes, and hurricanes, especially families struggling with the effects of Hurricane Ian, God of grace, hear our prayer. For every nation and for those entrusted with authority, grant our leaders self-discipline in all things and inspire them with love for your people. God of grace, hear our prayer. For victims of violence, abuse, and neglect, heal those who have been harmed and protect those who are vulnerable. For all who are sick, especially Bud Bessonen, Lois Pinar, Matthew Parney, Pastor Dave Van Clay, Bert Zenker, Jim Lancor, Judy Davenport, Bob Pulowski, and those we name before you now, either aloud or in this moment of silence. God of grace, hear our prayer. For this and every congregation, rekindle your gifts within your people and inspire councils, committees, and individuals to plan and work together that all may know your love. God of grace, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving that you have had abolished death and for the saints who have died, especially Nina Johnson and Jill Balm, bring us all to eternal life with you, God of grace, hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share that peace with one another.
mission developer in Florida. We couldn't find a musician. All we could get was a tiny little digital hymnal that we sang songs by. You are blessed. Put it together for them, will you? <clears throat> Let the vineyards be beautiful. pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing. Make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets the table for us all. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. <coughs> and so, with all the choirs of angels, church on earth, the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed, our Lord took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then he took the cup. When he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood given and shed for you and many for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Join me in his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, everyone is welcome to the table of our Lord. Absolutely everyone. Come. All is now ready.
Will the people please stand for the blessing? Now may the body and the blood of our Lord strengthen and keep you in true faith unto everlasting life. May you go in peace. May the God of peace go with you. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith and hope and love. One more Sunday. Thank you, folks. See you again. Praise be to God.